Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us in week four of the Six Weeks to Success, and we are switching it up a little bit this week. You know, I can talk about systems and how-tos all I want, and while I was a stylist, um, I really wanted you to get like that getting out there and getting it done kind of perspective from a stylist. And as far as Winnie and Kat goes, there aren't too many other stylists who understand this as well as Meredith, and not only is she, her stylist number is like, the first number we have, it's actually S999, um, but she was with us back before we even had a website to order from. So back in the day when we mailed it in or us lucky local gals would just drop it by the home office, um, back when we were selling jammies and loungewear. So Meredith is a wealth of information. And even after taking quite some time off, Meredith, your lifetime volume with Winnie and Cat is just over $34,000. So um, and like 29,000 of that is just from party volume. So you do have a wealth of information from parties. And um, it's, you know, parties are huge in this industry. And I know Meredith and I talked about that a lot. And I, I talk a lot about having that one person or the, that group of people who are your go-to encouragers. And when I was a stylist starting out, um, Meredith and I, we were that to each other. And we really bounced ideas off each other. We, yes, we bitched and complained a lot together. But then at the end of the conversation, it was always, we always went back to the same thing. We, in order to solve every problem we have, we need to be active and we need to have parties and sell. That solves every problem. And, um, you know, so I am very thankful for you, Meredith, for having been, um, that person that I could go to for being my positive sounding board. And um, for any of you out there, I'm going to volunteer you now, anyone out there who needs that positive sounding board, that's what Team Passion for Fashion Facebook group is. And also really reach out to your fellow stylists and have that person that you can find that positive place with. So, and before we get started, Meredith, what, you know, I mentioned you took a little bit of time off. What brings you back? What, what keeps you going with Winnie and Kat? Um, well, that's a, it's a really kind of deep, heavy um, thing, but the year, and I didn't take it completely off. I was still, I've always stayed engaged. I couldn't, I couldn't ever let myself get all the way gone, and, um, and without going into, like, on the therapy couch, it's because <laughs> it's, it's, it's where I belong. It's, I've been, you know, I, I feel I'm very connected to the, the beginnings of this company, and it's, it's kind of the one place that um, that I feel like I am supposed to be, and I, I belong here. So um, it, it's my it's my second family. It's you know I have friends for life from this company, and um, and it just it, it, I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't look away. You know, I, even when I like I said I had to take my my hiatus. I was always peeking in and, and, you know, reading everything and doing everything because um, I, you know, we, I think we all have to feel the same way about Diane. She's just, um, she's magnetic, she's smart, she's energetic, um, and I, I know that she will do everything she can to make this work, and so it's, 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 it's contagious to, to be around someone like that and, and then the other stylists also that have that same feeling. So um, it's kind of hard to narrow down to one or you know one thing but it's, it's kind of it's just a feeling it's, it's, it's where I belong yep and we felt the same way I know we were always reaching out to you like hey you know how's it going when are you coming yeah. back <laughs> cool so when yeah. did you start with Winnie and Kat um well I actually um I joined Winnie and Kat at the very beginning like you said I met Diane at a party my friend Amy Parker invited me to a Winnie and Max party and I'd never heard of Winnie and Max, and um, but I wanted to go and support her. And you know, I always love a party and a glass of wine and some girl time. So um, I hopped over, and and Diane was there, and she um, had this rack of pajamas, and I thought, okay, well, those are cute. And and she just talked a little bit about the company, and um, this was in June of 2012. And I just, I, we really hit it off. We had a lot of things in common. And um, the party ended, and we kept in contact. And then I joined Winnie and Max in November 2012. And so, like you said, when we switched over and launched as Winnie and Cat, 
Um, I was the beta tester for the new system. <laughs> so um, I joined in you know January 2013 for Winnie, Winnie and Cat. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I was, it was all timing. I'm a firm believer in right place, right time, and timing. And um, and all the ladies that are listening to this call, I, I think, understand that too. That you you took advantage of timing, and, and here you are. So. Mhm. Mm Absolutely. Cool. Well, besides the website, which I know has, you know, you are probably more excited than anybody else <laughs> with the new website. What was the biggest obstacle that you have overcome? Um. Honestly, it's just myself, and, and just I always say I need to get over myself and, and overthinking things and um, over over planning and overdoing and over shopping for I mean just everything I did had to be just overdone, and and the party, ironically, was my biggest obstacle. I just I had such a hard time with the party, and once I um, and we can we'll talk about this later, but I. That was the biggest one for me, was getting, getting over the party. Mm -hmm. And not so much having parties and having fun, but perfecting the party and making it perfect um, was, hard, was hard for me. Mm -hmm. Speaking <laughs> of not overdoing it, making it perfect. <laughs> Hi, ladies. It's Mary. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. So, um, if, uh, I, I go might ahead. have to jump off if anybody comes in here, but I'm... Yeah. <laughs> and Peggy's no on also. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi, Hi Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how do you – now, we talk about hostess coaching is the key to a great party. How do you feel about hostess coaching? Um, honestly, I'm not the best at it, but I do, I do see the value in it, and the party – where I do communicate with the hostess um, regularly part of that party because they're engaged and um, they they know that I'm thinking about them and I'm not just going to, you know, I didn't just put the party and then show up that day. So um, I'm Oops, not there's a little background that. noise. There, yeah, someone needs to mute. Yeah, if everyone could just hit your mute button on your phone, that would be awesome. We're just getting a little bit of background noise. It sounds like my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Saber's called on the other line. Yeah, yeah, Saber's on. Um, so yeah, so I, I typically um, I check in. I try to check in as many times, you know, two or three times before the party, depending on the length of time, you know, before looking at the actual party. Um, and I don't spend a lot of time. I don't, you know, overwhelm them with a lot of details. I just um, I just check in and let them know that I'm thinking about them and see if they need anything. Mhm. Mm Perfect. You know, I think for me, a lot of hostess coaching and a lot of reaching out is I need to learn to visualize the person on the other end being excited to hear me because a lot of times I think, oh gosh, it's going to be me again. And, you know, why would they think that? Like, I love talking on the phone with my friends. So for me, hostess coaching is shifting my perspective from, oh gosh, here she is again to, oh cool, it's Tiff or oh cool, it's Meredith. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not a phone talker um, mm -hmm. because I talk too much. And so once I get on the phone, I just, you know, ask anybody on my team that has the pleasure of calling me. It's like, blah, 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 blah. you know, I, I, I tend to, I need to learn to be more concise and, you know, again, take care of my business and, and not, not drag it out. So that's a skill that I have to learn that I'm working mm -hmm. on. Um, Do you use a I script? Uh, no. Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at, no, because I don't, I, 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 I go off track. Yeah. So. <laughs> Notice that, <laughs> yeah, the television director's kid is going, do you use a script? <laughs> yes. Um, I have one. I, it's in front of me. I use it. I mean, I, I do um, create them and print them and set them in front of me, and I start off that way, and then I put it aside and just go. <laughs> And you know what, I think that's okay, though. I think it's great to talk about life and to, to be extemporaneous with your hostess coaching. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm a very, um, I don't want to use the word unprofessional because I, I do feel like I'm professional, but I'm very laid back and relaxed in my approach with things. So I tend to, you know, try to, I, I don't, I don't want it to sound too form, formula, 
formulaic or scripted, so I, I, I get nervous about it. But um, it is certainly helpful to use them as a guide to make sure you cover all your points. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of mixing in, you know, getting your points across and also adding a lot of your personality in will, will be um, is the way to do it. I awesome. Think. Now, what is your um, your number one tip? If there's one person or one thing everyone can walk away from this with, what it, what is it? Uh, um, be yourself. You know, everybody is different, and we all know this. You all know you're a unique person. Um, and then, for some reason, I felt like when I would when I would go do a party or even get on the phone, like we were just talking about, I had to turn into this like different person, like direct sales lady, and, and, it, it, and it made me really, I would leave a party going, who was that? Like, <laughs> I, like I don't even know who I was at that, that event, you know? So um, during my, my break and my time off, I really did a lot of reflecting and a lot of, like, soul searching and, you know, um, trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do. And, and my biggest thing was, like, Stop trying to be something that you're not. You know, stop trying to do something that you don't, you're not, I'm not saying don't do things you're not comfortable with. Of course you should. But if you're a funny person, be funny. If you're structured, be structured. If you're, if you like presentations, do a great presentation. If you don't, figure out how you can do it so that you're not, you know, um, coming off as of someone that you're not. Because I, that, that's my biggest thing is just be yourself and just have fun. It's supposed to be fun. I love that. Absolutely. So part of what can make or break a party, too, are outside orders. Um, how yes. do you help your hostess collect outside orders? Well, I, um, I always, not always, I've just recently in the last couple of parties, probably the last five to ten parties, whatever, um, I set up a Facebook group. And mm -hmm. um, they can use that to invite their guests. Um, they can also, I, I, I post pictures beforehand, but I will also post a link. And now, of course, this is every game changer, right, um, mm -hmm. with this mobile cart. I post a link and let people know, you know, if you can't attend the party, you can, you can still help your hostess. You can shop easily here. Um, and then I'm also trying to work in, you know, the incentive if you order before and where you're winning, you get an extra prize, you know. So I'm just trying to get people engaged before the party so they're excited about things. Um, and then also just let the ladies that can't be there know, hey, you know, you can still participate. You can still help your hostess. Um, so I use the Facebook group a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I've only, um, since I, I, I'm not real good about sending out a hostess packet. Um, so I don't, there's not a lot of catalog orders before. Um, I do have hostesses that will email me or call me and say, I have a lady that can't come and wants to order. And then, of course, you know, I address that directly. But um, I use the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. You know, the great thing about a group is over an event is that you can download a file into the Facebook yes. group yes. where the event yes. you can't, right? Um, it's either that or vice versa. Yeah, I, I know the groups we can download files because I um, – P Team Passion for Fashion is a group. Yes, events you cannot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a great idea. So, I love that. And then, of course, use right. all of our look of the days and all that kind of stuff. Yes, and, you know, I just, um, and you can, you know, whichever one you're more comfortable with, groups or events, um, you can figure out ways to, to do them. They both have their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I, I just, I kind of like getting to know the people before the event. I feel like, then I'm walking into the party and I have a better idea of who, you know, who, who's there, what they're like. I mean, I can check their Facebook pages before, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friendly <laughs> stalking. A friendly stalker, yes. So what do you oh, find at your parties to, <laughs> what do you find at your parties to big, be the biggest aha moments for your customers? Um, I love it when they put something on that they didn't think, they, you know, could wear or should wear or would wear or, you know, they'll say, oh, I don't wear stripes or I don't wear colors and um, they put something on and, and they look at themselves and they go, oh, that actually looks really good or, you know, I just, I like seeing people um, try, try different things with their clothes mm -hmm. and, and the response that their friends give them when they're like, oh, my God, that looks amazing, you know. Um, I, I like seeing that, re that reaction. That's cool. I love that too. 
So what do they not expect to get from a party that you can teach them? Um, well, I, you know, I, I'm trying to learn more about the actual styling part of my title. I'm not, a, you know, I was never a fashion person. Um, mm -hmm. I dress comfortably, which is one reason why Winnie Cat works for me. Um, <laughs> but I, I didn't consider myself like a very stylish or fashionable person, like putting things together. That I'm learning a lot from the other ladies, and, you know, I visit more websites now. But I just try to teach them, a, you know, um, confidence. You know, I hear, I hear a lot of negative self-talk at parties. I mean, every, there's always a, w women that are just like, oh, I, I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too big, I'm too small. I, you know, and I, just, I like kind of building them up and, and telling them, you know, no, you can, you're not too big, you're not too small, you're not too short, you're not too tall. So I just I try to teach them um, self confidence, mm -hmm. self love, mm -hmm. and everyone Very cool. also in a fashion tip that I learned. <laughs> a little icing on the help cake. Me, help me, silent ladies. <laughs> You know what's cool too is uh, since people are surrounded by their friends, it's it's a good opportunity to go, you know, hey, you know, if Cheryl's, you know, saying bad things about herself, go to Cheryl's friend and say, hey, what do you think Cheryl would look great in, you know, yeah. and get Cheryl in something because she's going to feel good in whatever we put her in. Right. Cool. Now to go um, to some of our stylist forum training, I know you're a fan of Jackie's training. Um, can you give us just yeah. a real quick overview? Sure. I mean, um, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, the whole training process of her script, of her. Just, you know, what do you like about it and what are you going to take from it? Because we're all going to take the training and, like you said, be yourself and put your own little tweak to it. So, so what did yeah. you take away from it? Well, I, I like, um, I just like the, the way that she, um, that it's the same each time, you know, mm -hmm. that you can go in and, and say, uh, you start with this. You start with a brief introduction. I like the idea of the playing cards. Um, I like how she uses the lookbook in connection with the demo. Um, I like, you know, that there's that it's built in so that she's planting her opportunity and hostess seeds um, where it's not, it doesn't seem so um, scripted and, and mm -hmm. like this is where I discuss the opportunity, you know. It's just, it seems very real and that you can make it as structured or as flexible as you like. I just, it's a very good base, um, baseline to follow. You know, uh -huh. you, you, you do your quick introduction, you do, you talk about your specials, you go through the demo. I also like, which I have not done yet, to be honest, I like the short shopping and get them back. Yeah. Um, that, that to me is like, because as you know, the women will get lost in the clothes. I mean, they, once they get over there, they're gone, you know. Yeah. You, you, they're, you've lost the control of the <laughs> And they're just, you know, clothes are flying and it's, it's all over. So I like the idea of kind of getting them back and then, once again, going through the specials and saying, this is how you can get this, what did you like, and kind of um, gaining control of the party. So I, I like that it, it kind of keeps – the, keeps you um, controlling the party rather than the party controlling you. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And do you use booking bonuses? I do. I do. I just started doing them. Um, it, it, they, they, I, I have these little bags. I go to the dollar section at Target. I've got like a lip gloss in there. Um, you know, those little seed starter kits you can buy for a dollar. Just little trinkets, you know, in a cute little polka dot bag with a Winnie Cat sticker. They cost me, you know, a couple of bucks each thing. Um, but it's a visual cue to remind me to, to offer the, um, the hostess opportunity. And also the women are looking at it all night going, I wonder what's in that bag. I wonder what's in that bag. I wonder what's mm -hmm. in that bag. So, we all want what we can't have, right? Everybody wants what's in the bag. And, you know, and I'm like, you know, this bag can be yours. Let's, let's pick a date, you know. So I definitely use them. I think they're a great tool. Um, and then I, I even have some sometimes, you know, door prize bags. I just I love the, the gift bag. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. I love that she has the hostess wear two necklaces, too. And if someone books a party, they take the necklace off of her and yes. put them on herself. I think that's a really cool idea. Yes. Fun. Things, yes, things, tangible things are fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, do you find that parties 
are they more successful when you have that control of the crowd and do a presentation, or how do you, what do you find? I think so, yes. I mean, I, I, may, I don't know if, if my sales are always greater when I have control of the room, but I do know that I get more um, interest in booking and more opportunity interest when I'm doing the party as, as, a present, as an event, as a, as a presentation, as a business, you know. Um, when I just have women coming in, pouring the wine and trying on clothes, I, I sell the clothes, but there's no bookings and no opportunity. Um, oh, cool. So Interesting. I take control of it and say, like, Jackie's presentation helps you do, um, you know, this is this, this is this, this is this. They're still having fun. I'm, it's mm-hmm. not an hour long. I'm not talking about, like, holding them hostage, like you say. Um, <laughs> but having those opportunities to talk about hostess hostess opportunities and business opportunities um, makes a difference. Yeah. You know, keeps the parties going. Mm-hmm. And on that note, how do you connect personally with the guests to get them engaged in, the, in your presentation and your party? Um, I always ask them how they know the hostess, um, you know, do they have kids, where do they go to school, do they play sports, you know, just anything that I, um, that, that's similar to me that I can find a connection with them. Um, mm-hmm. So my kids play sports, I have kids, they're in elementary school, so I'm like, oh, you know, usually friends of friends have similar things, so um, and everybody, you know, loves to talk about their kids, and um, so I just, you know, find out how, find out how they know the hostess. Uh huh. Cool. Now we know too that getting ladies to actually try pieces on is key to sales because mm-hmm. once they start, it is a landslide, like you said. How do you encourage them to start trying things on? Um, I use the hostess for that because you know, again, they're they're friends with the hostess. Um, sometimes I'm you know the same level of friend, but usually I, I have the hostess encourage um, their most. Um, uninhibited friend, I guess, you know, uh, to mm-hmm. go in and, and put something on. And I'm like, I, ha- I want to see you in that. I have to see you in that. There's always, you know, that woman who's like, you know, she's going to look great in the, ma- the tall girl in the room. I'm like, get that maxi on, you know, or the, you know, the one who would look great in the convertible top. I, you know, I just kind of try to look around and say, oh, I think that would look really great on you. And um, I'd love to see you in it. Um, yeah. And, and also have the hostess, like you said earlier, encourage certain friends to try on certain pieces. Mm-hmm. Cool. Now, how do you, after they've tried the clothes on, how do you manage your orders? Well, I used to um, do them myself. So I would always, I have a, a very good helper in my mom that comes with me to a lot of events. And she will stay and kind of like um, talk about the clothes while I sit and take orders. She's like my co stylist. <laughs> um, but when she's not there, I, um, I've actually now, I just give them the clipboard and I ask them to fill out as much as they can and um, just kind of let them know, I'm going to be over here taking orders, you know, and enjoy yourself, relax, talk, you know, talk to your friends, and um, do, then I do the one-on-one and go through it with them. And that's why I also, you know, get more personal interaction with them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I also enter, if it's, um, if, if it's, conducive to doing it this way, I will enter the orders directly in yeah. um, the system. But it's not always uh, easy to do that. So mm-hmm. it just depends. Yeah. It's great with the new shopping cart because we have that real-time inventory that shows up. So if they're kind of yeah. waffling and there's three left, right? get on it, girl. <laughs> yeah. So And I haven't done a party yet with that. So I was actually, that's a, that's a good point to bring up. Is that something that you know, I guess we just put our party ID in the in the bottom of the box. Yep, in the notes section. Okay, good to know. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what's great about those um, customer specials we have now, where they enter your customer or the, your stylist ID, is we're not yeah. getting a lot of orphan orders anymore. Like, there's not a whole lot that I have to track down anymore. They're all using yeah. that sale. They're loving it. Yeah, that's a smart um, a smart way to to capture who the stylist is by by having them you know, benefit from putting that number in. Absolutely. We're all about trying to help you ladies. <laughs> I know you are. We appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate so, it. so here's a loaded question. How often do you share the three opportunities and how do you go about it? I don't know what you mean, Tiff. 
How often do I share it at the party? Yep. Um, again, I'm I I read the party and I see kind of how things are going. Um, if there's someone, you know, I try to definitely at least once. I try to do um, three times, beginning, mm-hmm. in the middle, and at the end, if people are checking out. Um, I I. I know that I would be much more successful if I was more intentional about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do get caught up in the event sometimes, and I'm like, um, you know, woo! <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> so, yes, what just happened? And I leave, and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know, you know, <laughs> but, you know, that's what, that, those are like my, you know, over $1,000 parties where I'm yeah. a, a sale, you know, I feel like I've got these crazy sales parties, and they're, I'm exhausted afterwards, and I'm like, I didn't even talk about the business, you know. <laughs> um, um, that is a skill that I'm working on, and, um, you know, that's, that's one of the areas that I want to improve in. And back to Jackie's, I think that's a great way to do it is, is to, um, to practice, you know, that thing. And mm-hmm. I forgot to mention it then. I, I, if you have the ability, which most of you do if you have a phone, record yourself doing that presentation. Um, I recorded myself, I don't know, 10, at least 10 times going through it. The first one was like 30 minutes. The second one was, you know, 18 minutes. And I was, again, I talked too much. I got it down to like eight minutes. Um, so I was like, okay, if I can shave some off that, it, I think it'd be great, you know? So That's a great tip. Yourself, watch, watch yourself doing it. Listen to, you know, um, I listen back to things that I repeat. I repeat myself. I say, yeah, I'm like, okay, I don't need to say that. I don't need to go into that much detail. Um, it's a really good training tool for me to to hear myself uh, speak. Yeah. And I think don't be afraid to use scripts, too. If you're just starting out and you're not, even if you've been doing it for a while and you're just shy and you, you want to have a bullet point script, you know, don't Absolutely. be afraid to use that and then brag about it. You know, I'm a Absolutely. terrible public speaker, but I use my scripts. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. It should not look polished, and I mean, again, if you can make it look polished, I wish I could, but um, mm-hmm. most of us are like, um, well, you know, uh, wait, what is that talking about? You know, oh, wait, I forgot to do that. <laughs> oh, wait. So I think the more natural and, and authentic it is, the more more women will say, wait a minute, I can, you know, I can do that. Yeah. Because you can Yep, and I wish I could take credit for the slice bread stories. We got those from Deb Bixler, but if you guys have yeah. ever reviewed that training, it's a great way to share the opportunities without sharing the opportunities. You know, it's just like if someone mentions, oh, I need a vacation, but we can't afford it, you know, you, I would say something like, you know, oh, I know exactly how you feel. You know, a couple of years ago, my husband and I, we do a yearly Cabo trip, and we weren't going to go because we couldn't afford it. And I was able to hustle up a bunch of parties with my friends and pay for our Cabo trip just off my sales, you know, just yeah. off my commissions. That's a slice bread story. And it's a way of conversationally, um, you know, talking about the opportunity. They're called slice bread stories because you have to believe that Winnie and Cat is the best thing since sliced bread. So it's not a completely rando title. <laughs> but right. now another thing, I, we're taking that left turn like, you know, we're so good at doing. But do you... <laughs> At your parties, these are so polarizing. I know. Do you do games? Um, I don't. Mm-hmm. Only because I don't. I I I, I overthink it. I'm like, okay, I have to have the best prize. You know, I I have to do. It has to be the most fun game, and it has to be. You know, so I do the booking bags. Um, I, I will do, like, raffle tickets sometimes. You know, I'll, like, bring a friend, get two tickets, and, and I, get, I do giveaways and store prizes and things like that. But um, the, the skill, it, to me, it's a skill of being able to incorporate a game into your presentation. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, I, I, you know, I think people are really afraid of games, and people make fun of games, but then when they do them, they're like, that was, you know, that was fun. <laughs> totally. I agree. You know, it's a good way. It's a good icebreaker. It's a good way to get people kind of like um, focused on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, we're, the, we're here to have fun and be silly. And sometimes it's fun to play a game. Yeah, absolutely. The, only, the one game that I love is the ring me up game. 
that um, I do in the YouTube video of a presentation you can see. But it, you basically just have everyone, have the hostess bring everyone into your presentation area and um, have them bring their cell phones. And it's kind of twofold. They're gonna, you're going to give them your phone number. They're going to call the person who rings through first um, gets a prize. And then once you're in their, your contact numbers in their system or in their little display, add me to your contacts um, as first name Tiff Mulligan, last name Winnie and Cat. So even if they remember Winnie and Cat or Tiff, my name's going to pop up in their contacts. Right. And then I ask them to like quiet their phone or something just so it doesn't interrupt my presentation. That's, yeah, I call it a Tiff game. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. <laughs> So, you know, we're just right at 10 o'clock. Um, we timed it perfect. You'd think we'd practiced. Um, any tips, final words of encouragement, whatever you can um, give us? Um, I, I would just say that it, it does get easier. Um, I, I, like I said before, I didn't like doing parties when I first started. They made me nervous. I, I overthought them. Um, and then I, you know, it took my break. And I, tr I changed the way that I thought about parties. And I thought, you know what, um, instead of telling myself, oh, I don't, you know, I have a party on Friday and I'm so nervous and I'm so, I would tell myself, I like doing parties. My friends like going to parties. My friends like hosting parties. You know, all of those things that we're taught to do, I did them. And now I'm like, oh, I have a party on Sunday. Awesome. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to see if there's somebody there new that loves Winnie and Cat. So um, change the way you think about it, you know, um, and have, just relax and have fun. It, 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 the first one is hard. The second one is hard. The third one, you know, not so hard. And it does get easier and it gets more fun. And the, the party's where the magic is. We've heard it. We say it. That's where it happens. Absolutely. Run from the party. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very Talk cool. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. This was fun. So, ladies, fun um, thanks. I know, right? Um, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. We're going to be very busy. And um, thanks for wearing it and sharing it, working it, you guys. Thanks, Meredith. Thank you. All right. Bye, ladies. Bye.